Hi, this is Kat with Beta Halik, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a beaded hemp bracelet with macrame square knots. Now, today I'm going to be using the 2O Matubo beads, and this is what our finished product is going to look like here. You can see I've done it in this beautiful sunny yellow. And today I brought out a really neat thing. This is the hemp cord that we have, and you can see this is the cord that I used to create my yellow one here. But I'm gonna go ahead and use this natural color here to create with my blue beads. So this is a great little thing, so you can choose your different colors, especially because we have so many colorful colors of the Matubo 2 seed beads. Now today I'm gonna to be using my mini macrame board, and the other tools that you'll need is just a pair of scissors and a ruler. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to set my board to the side because we are going to get everything ready to go. And I'm actually going to move my sample just a little bit out of the frame there. Okay, so let's come and let's find the end of our piece here of our hemp cord. Let me make sure I'm finding the right one. There we go. All right, so we are going to be doing a very simple bracelet that's about six inches, but I'm gonna give you enough length that you can do probably a good seven inches with this. So again, you'll just sort of judge uh, the length that you need here, but go ahead and use my measurements as a guide. So we need one piece that is three feet long. So we have one, two, and three. And you can see I'm being very generous with my measurements there, because why not? All right, so I have that piece set aside. And now for another piece, we're gonna do about five feet. So let's get some more off of there. There we go. And one, two, three, four. There was four. <laughs> All right, and five. All right, beautiful. I'm just cutting this off camera here, but same thing, <laughs> just snip that off. All right, now we can set our ruler aside. So go ahead and take the two ends of your five foot cord, bring those down, and we're gonna find the loop end on this side. So go ahead and leave that where it is. And we're gonna do the same with our three foot cord here. Go ahead and find that loop there. And bring it down here. Perfect. So now I can pick up both of these loops and I'm just gonna make a overhand knot by just bringing it around and bringing those two loops through the loop that's there. Now when you're pulling this through, make sure your loops are nice and even, take your time, kind of you can wiggle your finger in there. And I like to just use the tip of my finger there because what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little knot on the other side. So this is what you want to achieve here because we are going to have our little knot loop on the other side so you can see where we're going there, okay. So now that we have this all set up and ready to go, make sure that's nice and tight and it's the way we want. We can get everything else out of our way here. Okay, and let's go ahead and bring in our macrame board. Now, if you haven't worked with the macrame board before, it's actually really fun. It's this nice little sort of thin, um, uh, actually, um, it's, it's not styrofoam. It's, it's kind of like a foam board though. Uh, so, what you can do is you can either, if your loop was bigger, you could loop it over one of these, but I'm just gonna set mine into one of the notches here. So just kind of pulling it down and just set it in there so it doesn't go anywhere. So now you can see it's not gonna go anywhere. Let me just show you the back there. So we have just my little piece sticking out of the back. Okay, but we're not gonna be doing too much tugging on this. So this is going to be perfect. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna separate my cords so that the two smaller cords are in the center and the two longer cords are out to the side. Okay, so I have my two shorter cords in the center here, two longer cords out to the side. Okay, so now we are all set up and ready to go. Let's go ahead and do our macrame square knot. So this is how you do a one single macrame square knot. So we're gonna take this side and bring it over, bring this over the top, and we're gonna bring it down around the back and pull it through this loop on the other side here. So if you can just sort of see, we've gone over and then around and through. And now we're just gonna pull this up here, right to the tippy top. We wanna get it as close to the knot as possible. And then we're gonna go the other way. So we're gonna create a loop that's this way. And then we're gonna take the one that's in our left hand, bring it down behind those two center cords 
and bring it out to the other side. So that is one complete square knot. They're each called a half hitch knot. So if you wanted to do them, and if you wanted to do it all the same way, you would end up with a little spiral. But we are just going to do our square knots for this one. Now, go ahead and bring both of those cords together at the bottom. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick up one of our Matubo beads and we're gonna slide it onto both of our cords there. All right, and then we're just gonna slide it all the way up to the very tippy top. And you guessed it, now we're ready to do another square knot. So what's gonna happen is those cords are just gonna come on the outside of that bead. So we are gonna go the same way. So always working to the left first. So I work with the cord in my right hand to bring it to the left. That's how I uh, kind of set that up for myself. And now I'm working with the left cord and bringing it to the right. And that's our one square knot there. Now we're just gonna repeat that entire process and just keep adding on your little beads here. Now I will say this, while these beads are nice and big and they have a nice big hole, what can happen is your ends could start to fray a little bit, which is why I, I recommend kind of always having a little extra length because that way you have the ability to trim it in case they do get a little too frayed, uh, you can still continue with your work. So I know sometimes people are like, oh no, it's wasteful. It's like, well, but if you get caught, you know, I would rather have the safety net of I can still continue as opposed to my last hour's worth of work is, is no good. So it's up to you. I will let you make that call, but that is just my personal little kind of decision there that I like to do. All right, so I'm gonna continue to do this for the length of my bracelet. And I will be back here to show you how we are going to finish and tie it off. Okay, so I am just doing the last square knot here and just pulling that nice and tight. And you can see, and one of the great things about this is you can see how long it is here, but feel free to take it off of the board at any point and just kind of pinch this side over here and wrap it around your wrist, see if you're getting to the right size that you want, you know, and mine's actually just about perfect there. So this is gonna give you about a six and a half to seven inch bracelet. But again, if you're not happy, just go ahead and set that back in there and your cords are kind of pre-separated for you, which is nice, and just keep adding beads. So this is a really easy one to size. Um, I, I, you know, I kind of love that about it, but you can also see how much cord extra I, I have kind of laid out here for you. And this is to ensure that if you wanna add a few more beads or you wanna, you know, make it extra long, you can do that. So use that as a guide. All right, so I'm gonna set my board aside. And the last piece here is I'm just gonna gather all four of those cords together. And we're just gonna do one big overhand knot. And go ahead and pull that through. And go ahead and kind of, you can see that I'm just scooching my knot down close as I can. I do want to leave a little bit of a gap because that is where our loop is going to sit. So just go ahead and pull that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another overhand knot. Just kind of bringing that around through. And what this is going to do is just kind of give us a little, little something extra here. Now you do have the option to... Let's say you have a big gemstone bead or a wood bead. You can add a wood bead there on the end and that will be what will fit through your hoop. But if you do that, you're gonna need to know beforehand because you're gonna need to adjust your hoop. <laughs> so now what we can do is we can just make sure that that's all gonna sit nicely through. And obviously we're pulling all of our big long tails through, but that is in essence what you have there. So the final step is we come in with our scissors and I like to leave about an inch. This stuff does tend to fray. So by leaving a little inch, you're giving it that natural fray on the end that you can wear on your hemp bracelet. But this is a really fun little design. Uh, you can choose your favorite color of your hemp and your favorite seed beads. I think it's just so wonderful to use with those beautiful 2-0 Matubo seed beads. I hope you enjoyed this video. You can get all of these supplies and see even more tutorial videos by heading over to beadaholic.com. And if you're new to our YouTube channel here, be sure to hit that subscribe button below to get all the latest from Beadaholic.